Hello and welcome back to my Minecraft tutorial. Just before we start this episode, we need to do something very important in the game state um, base class. And that is create a virtual destructor and I literally cannot believe I forgot to do this in episode um, episode 3 because it's extremely important. And this is done by simply saying virtual uh, game state destructor equals default. And the reason we need to do this is because this class is being used polymorphically. Um, so essentially when this um, class gets destroyed, the derived classes without this would not actually get their destructor called. Hence why we need a virtual destructor. Um, anyways, let's actually continue on with the actual episode now. In this video, we're going to be creating the chunk shader and the chunk renderer classes. So a few episodes ago, we created the chunk section class, which is the class to represent a 16 by 16 by 16 portion of our world. So essentially, in the next few episodes, we're going to be taking an array of C blocks and then converting into a mesh, which can then be used to draw a chunk in our world. However, before we can do that, we need some renderers and some shaders. And yeah, that's basically what we're going to be doing in this episode. Uh, for now, it's not really going to be anything new, and what we're going to be doing in this episode is going to be very similar to the simple shaders and renderers that we already have. So anyways, let's start off by just adding a bunch of files. The first file that we're going to add is chunkshader.h, which is going to hold our chunk shader class. So this is going to go in the source shader folder, and it's just going to be called chunkshader.h. Uh, and we're then going to add the chunk renderer header file, which is going to be the class for the chunk renderer. Surprise, surprise, which is going to go into the renderer folder. And it's just going to be called rchunk.h. Um, we're also going to press F11 to create the, um, the .cpp file of both of those header files. Actually, So anyways, to avoid confusion, I've just closed all of those files and we're going to open up the chunkshader.h file and we're just going to start off by creating the namespace that it's going to be in and it's going to be in the shader namespace of course and I'm just going to copy and paste that press f11 to go into the .cpp file and then include the chunkshader header file and then put that in the respective namespace as well you then want to do essentially the exactly the same thing for the chunk renderers but of course, rather than the shader namespace, we're going to be using the renderer namespace. Okay, cool. So that's uh, pretty much it so far. Right, so let's start off doing the chunk shaders. So if you remember from a very long time ago, your basic OpenGL shader is made out of two parts. The vertex shader and the fragment shader. The vertex shader is responsible for giving each of the vertices in the world a position on your window. As I explained in an earlier episode, it essentially converts 3D world coordinates to 2D screen coordinates. And then after the vertex shader runs, the fragment shader runs, which basically fills in the space between the vertices with texture or whatever you want really. So if you remember correctly, the vertex shader works by taking in the vertex positions of the model and the projection matrix, which is the matrix which makes things look 3D somehow the view matrix which is the camera's orientation and the model matrix which is the object's orientation. It then multiplies them together in a very specific way and then BAM! Beautiful 3D worlds. So we already covered this a very long time ago when we did our simple vertex shader and well the chunk vertex shader isn't really much different really. I mean the chunk is still having vertex positions and it's still you know, it gets multiplied by the projection matrix and the view matrix to give it a position in the 3D world. It's not really much different at all. In fact, we already set all of this up a very long time ago in the simple shader class. And because the chunk shader isn't really going to be much different, we're just going to inherit the chunk shader from the simple shader. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into the simple shader class and we're going to look at this function here, get the uniform locations. Now, if you remember correctly, this function is responsible for getting the uniform locations within the shader, um, which is these ones here. And getting the uniform locations is very useful as it allows us to, you know, sort of upload matrices from our C++ code into the shaders so OpenGL can then use them to render. However, the chunk is going to have more uniform locations than this here eventually. So what we're actually going to be doing is making this function virtual. So when we get our chunk of shader to inherit from this class, it can actually override this function. Another issue with the simple shader is that right now we use the simple vertex and the simple fragment. 
However, our chunk shader is going to be using different files to those ones. So we're going to be passing in const reference to std strings here. And one of them is going to be called vertex file, which is the vertex file name. And we're going to set the default arguments to be simple vertex, like that. And it's going to take another const reference to an std string, which is going to be defaulted to simple fragment, like so. And of course, because this is C++, we have to whack this in the... Uh, actually, we're going to rename this to fragment uh, fragment file. And yeah, we have to put this into the .cpp file as well, into the construct arguments there. And then because it's a .cpp file, well, I mean the function definition, you're not meant to have default arguments, so we have to get rid of those. And then we can just pass in the vertex file into the shader program constructor, like so. And well, I just tried to compile, and well, don't forget to get rid of the semicolon if you did copy and paste like I did. And then it should compile just fine. Anyways, let's get on and work on the chunk shader now. Yep, yeah, okay, so the first thing we're going to do is simply just, uh, you know, include the header file where the simple shader is so that we can inherit from it. And then we're going to create the class, and the class is just going to be called chunk shader, and it's going to have public inheritance from the simple shader. Alright, that's good for now. Um, so this class is going to have a public and private sections, so let's go ahead and add those now, like so. Um, so first of all, the chunk shader is going to have a constructor with empty arguments, and it's also going to override the get uniform locations. Uh, so that is void get uniform locations override. So that is actually overriding it from the simple shader class. So now let's go into the .cpp file and actually in, um, implement those uh, functions. Um, so the simple shader is going to be taking in two strings. Well, we don't actually have the um, .glsl files for now, but I can tell you what they're going to be called. They're going to be called chunk vertex and chunk fragment. So when we eventually go to create those .glsl files, um, well, it will pass in those shaders into the simple shader, which will then pass into the shader program, which will then load the shaders. Uh, so anyways, now they get uniform locations. Now, for now, we can actually just leave this one empty because, well, essentially, when we call the constructor of the simple shader, um, where is it? It's going to automatically call these ones here, which is the only ones we actually need for now. So for now, we're just going to leave it empty. However, we're still going to call it from the constructor so that when we go to sort of, um, well, when we do it later, we don't forget, basically. So that's the very simple uh, chunk shader class complete. Now, now let's move on to the chunk renderer. So let's go ahead and implement the chunk renderer. But we can actually do this very easily because, well, for now, it's going to be changed to later down the line. But for now, it's going to be very similar to the uh, the simple renderer. So I'm going to be lazy and just sort of copy and paste that over like so. But however, later down the line, it's going to be a lot different. So don't worry about the copy and paste for now because, well, it's just so we can save time in this video. But later down the line, as I said already, it's going to be quite a bit different. Okay, so let's actually change this into the chunk renderer now. So first of all, we're not going to be using the simple shader.h, we're going to be using the chunk shader.h. So let's change the include there. And we're not going to be rendering crods, we're going to be rendering from the uh, the chunk namespace, the uh, chunk section class. So let's forward declare that class there by putting in namespace chunk and then forward declaring the class like so. It's still going to be using the forward declaration of the camera. Also, it's not going to be called simple, it's going to be called chunk renderer. So let's change the name of that to chunk renderer. So the draw function, it's not going to be taking in a quarters argument, it's going to be taking in a chunk, chunk section reference called chunk, like so. Uh, the update function, that can stay the same. The prepare function, we can just get rid of that for now, actually. Uh, the SV vector is not going to be containing const quads, it's going to be co containing const pointers to the chunk sections. And it's going to be called mchunks. Now it's not going to be using the simple shader, it's going to be using the chunk shader as I mentioned already. 
And for now, we don't actually need the clock, so we can get rid of that for now. So now that the class declaration is complete, let's go ahead into the .cpp file and implement those functions, like so. Uh, so the draw function, that's going to be pretty simple. It's just going to sort of push the... Um, that's just going to be mchunks.pushback the chunk. So it's going to be passing in that chunk into the vector here. Now the update function is the function that actually goes ahead and sort of renders the chunk. So the first thing that this function is going to be doing is binding the shader so that we can you know, use the chunk shader so we can actually render the chunks using the chunk shader of course. Um, the next thing it's going to do is sort of just upload the view matrix to the shader so that is mshader.loadViewMatrix. Am I doing it wrong? What's going on? Ah, it's called setViewMatrix. And then it's just uh, camera dot get view matrix like so, and then it's m shader dot set projection matrix. So that is set proj matrix, and then it's going to be camera dot get projection matrix like so. And the next thing it's going to do is loop through all of the chunks in the um, in the vector. So that's auto and chunk in m chunks, and then render them. But we have no well we have no means of actually rendering the chunks right now so for now that loop is just going to be empty and the last thing is just going to clear the vector so that is mchunks.clear okay so anyways i just tried to compile and i got a bunch of compile errors and that's simply because we didn't include the uh, camera class header so at the top of the r chunk.cpp file we're going to say include dot dot camera dot h and eventually we're going to be needing the chunk section class so we're going to be including world world slash chunk slash chunk section dot h like so and then hopefully it should just compile fine all right great unused variable chunk well that makes sense because well we have no means to actually you know use that right now so we can just ignore that warning okay so that is the chunk shader and the chunk renderer class complete However, we're now going to create the uh, .glsl file, the uh, shader files. So in I'm going to create a new file, it's going to be an empty file. And this file is going to go into data shaders folder and it's going to be called chunk vertex.glsl. I am then going to create the uh, chunk fragment.glsl file in the same location, that is data shaders. Uh, so that is chunk fragment dot glsl fragments and again this is well unfortunately going to be very similar to the simple fragment and the simple vertex uh, just for now though later down the line it's going to be very different but for now we can just copy and paste the respective uh, simple fragment dot glsl files into the respective chunk shader files like so Okay, so all we did there is copy and paste the simple fragment and the simple vertex into the chunk fragment and the chunk vertex. So we can actually go ahead and close the simple fragment and the simple vertex files now. And let's go ahead and change this up a little bit. So first of all, in chunk vertex.glsl, we don't actually need the model matrix. And you're going to see why in potentially the next episode, if I don't have an in-between episode. And secondly of all, what on earth am I doing here? This can actually be compressed into a much simpler looking thing. So overall, basically the OpenGL shading language has this nice thing, I think it's called swizzling or something like that. And essentially, rather than doing this in vertex position dot x, in vertex position dot y, in vertex position dot z, we can actually do this in a single argument by saying in vertex position dot x, y, z, and well, it does exactly the same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So it looks a lot neater. And finally, now that we no longer have the model matrix, we can just go ahead and remove that from this calculation here. So we've done a lot in this episode and well, there's only one more step. So what we've done so far is we created the chunk renderer class, we created the chunk shader class, and the last step is to whack all of this together in the master renderer class. So let's go ahead and do this now. So the first thing we're going to do in the master renderer is first of all include our new renderer which is in the rchunk.h file like so. 
so anyways, now that we've included the .h file for the chunk render, we can create an object of that type in the master renderer, so let's go ahead and do that. So the object we created earlier was called chunk renderer, and we're going to call this object m, uh, m chunk renderer, like so. And we then need a new function, so we can actually draw the chunks here. And this function is going to take in a const reference to a chunk, chunk section, like so. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement that function. Very simple to do. It's simply going to pass the arguments into the chunk renderer, like so. And chunk renderer dot draw model. Well, actually, I'm going to rename that to chunk there, so it makes more sense, like so. Okay, and the final step is to say m chunk renderer dot update, like so, in the update function of the master renderer and then pass in the camera. All right, so I went through that very quickly, so I'm just gonna repeat myself there. So what I did is I included the chunk renderer, I then created an object of the type chunk renderer and I named it M chunk renderer. I then created a draw function and this, and this draw function takes in one argument, which is a constant reference to a chunk section called model. I then implemented this function and we passed the chunk model into the chunk renderer. Like so, by saying m chunk renderer dot draw chunk, and then in the update function of the master renderer, we then well update the um the chunk renderer like so m chunk renderer dot update and then pass the camera in. So we covered a lot in this episode. The first thing we did is we created the chunk shader class. We then created the uh, chunk renderer class, and we then whacked that into the master renderer class like so, and we also created the draw GLS cell files for the chunks and well all of this is very important for the next episode where we're going to do very something very exciting in my opinion. We are going to be taking the array of blocks and then converting it into a mesh so we can actually draw our chunks finally and have some more visual results which is well, very exciting in my opinion. Anyways just before we end this episode I'd like to say thank you to my first Patreon super supporter so thank you yo shilling I'm very sorry if I pronounced your name wrong but anyways yes thank you very much. So anyways once again thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode which will either be the one where we create the chunk mesh builder or it will be another smaller in between episode. So anyways I'll see you then uh, thank you once again um, bye.